This is KPPQ LP Ventura, 104.1 FM, and we're in the women's room where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good. Today's guest is Shamsia Hassani, global artist of distinction, and she is a very brave woman. But hold that thought, and we'll talk about her in just a moment. A Muslim woman from Kabul, Afghanistan, Shamsia is a street artist, muralist, and art professor at Kabul University. Having recently completed a residency at UNIT to have her here in Ventura, she took part in the Art Walk, and her work is being shown at the Vida Art Center uh, on the avenue. Sue Pollock of the Art Walk and Mary Perez deserve great thanks for or arranging this and coordinating the visit to In the Women's Room, where we can hear her interesting take on Muslim women who have nearly no equality nor rights in her home country of Afghanistan. Hi, Shamsia. Hi. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Now, you do street art, in other words, graffiti and murals in the war-ravaged city of Kabul. Would you tell us a little about your murals? What are they like? How big are they? Um, yes, I do graffiti in Afghanistan, but uh, it's a little bit difficult for women to be outside because usually people trying to harassing women in society. Do they yell at you? No, but usually there are people using bad words th when they are passing by. Oh. And uh, most of them are trying to harass me. It's difficult to find a wall because people will not get the permission of the wall because they think that the thing I'm making is not something that they like. They like something about like landscape or portrait. They never think about something symbolic or something to have a message. Oh, they don't think about the symbol. But no. uh, don't you think perhaps that they're taking some of it in symbolically into they their minds? Do. Like when I want to get permission of the wall, the owner of the wall thinking that I should make something like like a photograph for them, like a beautiful landscape oh. or a portrait. Uh -huh. They don't want that I paint something on their wall which is symbolic. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, when people think of art, they often yeah. think about landscapes. They have, they have their own order for making art. And then when I want to paint something from my uh, sketches or my ideas, they don't want that. Oh, so what do they do? So do they not give you permission? Yeah, uh, it's difficult to find a wall. But usually I'm trying to find a wall, but there is no honor with like damaged walls or some walls that is somewhere with not exact any honor <laughs> i'm trying to be fast i see there are a lot of advertising on walls i mean it's allowed to do something on wall but when a woman does something it's not good <laughs> oh it's not good you they will get harassed because if a man is standing in front of a wall and do a lot of work like paint or put advertising there are people looking at him even they don't care what he's doing but if a woman does something they are trying to understand what she's doing oh. and then they trying to come and harass me so that's why they will find that she's making art or why she's in a street uh, when did you start this art form uh, we should tell I our listener that i start making graffiti in 2010 uh -huh. in a graffiti workshop in Kabul that organized by combat communication it was the first time that i tried to do graffiti before that i had no idea about that and after that workshop, I wanted to continue making graffiti because I thought it's a good way that I can introduce art to people. And because we don't have a lot of galleries and exhibitions, it's difficult for people to know about art. So if I put my art in a street, everybody can enjoy my art. And even I can cover the bad memories of war from walls. Because we had a lot of damaged walls, I can paint over those walls. Oh, wow. So it's kind of a, a, a double benefit y that you're yeah. attempting to give people. <laughs> yeah, but it's sometimes dangerous to me. Yes. Uh, so w what actually would happen to you? Well, uh, there are a lot of problems. The biggest problem is about the explosion happening everywhere. Oh. So when we have explosion and bombing around, we never know where the explosion will happen. So we are all the time worried that to be safe, to be at home, because we are thinking that there are always something to just scare about that. Yeah, you want to do it fast. Yeah, and then even there, when 
I face with the close-minded people, I all the time feeling bad. I want to leave the area. So, so h- how fast can you do a piece? Uh, like, how big are they? Six so feet, ten feet? Uh. Usually, usually I'm painting like about maybe two m- two meter by four meters, uh-huh. something like that, because not bigger as I want to leave fast. Usually, I make a mural in half an hour or an hour because I cannot stay more than that in a street. So uh, two to four meters in feet would be about uh, two, two yards and uh, four yards. I don't know. Like I cannot change meter to feet right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not very good at meter myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, they're probably like four to eight feet, something like Maybe, that. Maybe, yeah, yes. That's what I'm trying to work out here. Okay, mm. so you've probably developed some techniques, uh, you know, work them on so that you can do these murals fast. Yes. Yeah, because um, first when I started making graffiti, it was very difficult for me to use a spray cans. But later on, I could learn it better I, because I just practice a lot. And then now I can make it faster. And some techniques, like usually I have some stencils for the details. And because my paint material are not with good quality, even spray cans are not for painting, so the caps are very big. I cannot make details with the spray cans. Oh. So I need to have some brushes and acrylic paint or some marker for the details too. Uh huh. So do you pack up a little kit with your spray cans yes. of paint? And I'm, I'm yeah. looking at my sketch because usually I'm preparing a little sketch before I go to the wall so I know what I'm going to paint. And I see that what colors I need, how many colors I need to get. And then when I saw my sketch, I see the colors and I take everything ready and going to the wall. Oh, okay, so that was going to be uh, my next question. Do you oh. actually uh, plan ahead and make a sketch? And you yes. said that you do and you know yeah. which colors. In fact, in fact, the, t- the feeling I have all on a sketch usually because when I have some feeling, when I want to make some sketch, those are on little piece of papers. And I try to put, like, put my all feeling on that paper first. And when everything done, I can enlarge it at any size. But the most important thing to me is the composition I made on the paper. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of your, your subjects are women, correct? Well, those are women, but it used to be a woman as well. Like Because uh, when I wanted to uh, use a figure for my artwork, I was thinking to be a man or a woman. I didn't know. And I wanted to show a woman, like, doesn't matter, man or woman. Oh. So um, I just thought that because uh, women are facing with more limitation than men, I know that men has a lot of problems in Afghanistan, too. Like, women, they are in danger. But women have more limitation in society. Uh-huh. And because also I was a woman, I thought maybe I understand them better. I can feel them better. So that's why this character, which is a woman, is a woman. Uh-huh. So uh, maybe you could uh, tell our listener how you portray women in your murals. Like, uh, give us an example of one that so you. So because I usually my artworks are very symbolic. I'm I'm not painting very realistic, but I use sometimes some cl- uh, some realistic uh, techniques in my artwork. So uh, this woman has uh, has two eyes, which uh, which are closed, and she has no mouth. But she has a like a traditional dress and a scarf, and she has a music instrument with herself. So her eyes are closed because uh, there is nothing good in society to see. A lot of bad things happening around her. Ah, she doesn't want to see. Right. And uh, even she cannot see her future. That's why I ah. show the eyes closed. But it doesn't mean that she cannot see. She can see, but she cannot see the thing that she wants to see. Right. So, uh, and uh, usually she has a music in a sermon with herself that it's a symbol actually that she can play her voice with the music in a sermon to be louder and making more attention for people. But this music in a sermon sometimes is a guitar, sometimes is a piano, and sometimes I change the shape of piano and guitar to different shape, more symbolic that they can use it still she's feeling powerful when she has a music in a sermon with herself right which is her voice and and the you know the music speaks for women yeah. who are not yeah. able to speak yeah actually she's not playing music with that 
she is playing her voice like music in a sermon is her voice those she can play the words that she wants to say to people mm. yeah um, do a lot of women uh play musical instruments um not a lot just a few sometimes i saw right mm. right so you think this might inspire other women to see that women have a way or a means of getting yeah, their but voices but heard. S- but in my artwork, the my character is not playing music for playing music. Oh. They are playing her voice. Like there is something, this is symbolic. We cannot relate it to the reality world. But for me, the music in the segment is a just a symbol that it might be everything. She is feeling that she can play her voice with something that, ha- something support or something to have it with herself. Right. So uh, some of your um, murals or your paintings use um, bits of language of your uh, native language. Could you tell our listener what that is? Uh, so those are uh, those are some words I usually use. Um, some of them are some feeling I already had when I ma- when I wanted to paint something. I wanted to tell some story, and those words are related to the story I want to say about that painting. And those are not very complete sentences. Usually those are unknown words or unknown letters. Like when we remember our dreams, we just remember a few words. We don't remember everything. Right. So those are like that. Oh, okay. That is, yeah. After having seen um, some online, mm-hmm. now I understand better mm-hmm. that you explained it. <laughs> so um, you give women more robust figures. Of, you, know, you make them larger with square shoulders and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some figures are in beautiful diaphanous uh, mm. or s- uh, you know, kind of uh, shimmering burkas. Yes. Uh, first, when I start making graffiti, I start painting women with the burka, with sharp shoulders, with movement, and bigger than the real shape. I want that people look at them differently. I wanted to bring women in society with painting them on walls, and then people will see a different woman in society. So that's why I wanted to show a new woman, which has a lot of movement, happy, uh, stronger. So I, that's why. But after a while, people told me that, why you are painting the burkas? You like the burka? I said, no, it doesn't mean that I like it or I don't like it. Th- because they already have the burka. So I, I don't want to take the burka off because I cannot change their life. Right. If you take off the burka, we cannot change anything in her life. So uh, still she has no education, she has no decision, she has no equality. So the issue is not the burqa. The issue is we don't have peace and freedom. So we should think about peace and freedom more than thinking about the hijab we're wearing. Right. So that's just a clothing yeah, choice. Yeah, that's a clothing. I cannot fight with clothing for people, uh-huh. but I can fight for people's mind, for oh. people's thinking. So we should think about minds. We should think about the real meaning of freedom and peace. So that's why... I take off the burqa after that, and I show a woman bit of the burqa, but it's still her eyes are closed. Her eyes are closed. Yeah. I like your message to women is very inspiring. Yeah. So in the, um, you, you said, again, many of them have no mouths either, the women who wear the burqas or the hijabs. Mm. Yeah, because usually no one listening to them, so that's why I didn't put a mouth for her. Uh-huh. Because no one is listening to her, so... She's trying to play her voice like through the music instrument, something like that. Well, we're listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe before we go on, you should explain the difference between the burqa and the hijab. Um, the you're mm. wearing a hijab right now. Like the thing people in other countries thinking we have a lot of a specific word for different kind of hijabs. That one hijab is a burqa, which is a full coverage. They have a veil only for eyes. They can see. So there is another kind of hijab which they are not covering their face, but they are covering the whole body. There is another kind of hijab that they have a they have a big staff on, and they put a scarf, and then they everywhere is like they have long sleeve, long skirt. That's another kind of hijab. They have like shawl or another kind of a scarf. Those are different in my country, but I know in like. Uh, for you, it's only one hijab. Oh, I see. But we have a lot of different kind of hijab styles. So there is style and fashion. Yeah. Well, right now we're going to have to take a station break. But when we okay. get back, I'd like to have you describe for our listener what you're wearing. Okay, sure. Okay. This is KPPQ LP Ventura. 
104.1 FM, and we're in the women's room, where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good. Today's guest is Shamsia Hassani, Global Artist of Distinction. She is a Muslim woman from Kabul, Afghanistan. Shamsia is a street artist, muralist, and art professor at Kabul University. Okay, and we're back. So I'm very interested in the outfit that you have on. It's very, very pretty. Would you tell your listener what you have on? Well, <laughs> because usually I need to wear something with uh, long sleeves to be, we should be covered. Our clothing should not be very tight. We, we have our scarf. My scarf is already an artwork that there is an artwork miniature on it. Oh, it's and beautiful. With some calligraphy in it. And my dress is also long with long sleeves. Yeah, this is the thing that we usually use to wear. So you have long sleeves. And does your uh, dress go all the way down to your feet? Yes. Yes. And it should it be long, too. It should not be very short. Uh-huh. And it's uh, beautifully embroidered. <laughs> Thank you. you. With uh, flowers. And it's sort of a... What color would you describe? This is a kind of... We cannot say red. It's like if we, I don't know exactly. Ta like it's looking like red. It's looking like red, but it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's kind of a, a deep reddy orange pink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mixture of both. Yeah. And Shamsia has a beautiful gold and blue scarf on that has <laughs> uh, uh, artwork worked right into it, and beautiful uh, purple flowers on, on the sleeve. It's very, very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I've always been interested in uh, the garments that women wear in the uh, Eastern countries uh, because I spent all, uh, many months in Egypt about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I considered wearing an abaya, which is a sort of a, a body cover, a total body covering, mm -hmm. Uh, usually uh, without uh, in women in Egypt were, were without the face covering, although some did. But I, uh, I considered wearing it and even went to a shop uh, to try some on because I was really harassed by men there all mm -hmm. the time. It was very disconcerting. But I just I didn't actually do it because it was, to me, it was so uncomfortable and it was so mm. hot there that I just, uh, you know, and I didn't like the way I looked with my head covered up, <laughs> even though my face showed, mm. but I uh, grew up as an American woman used to being free. Mm. So, but, I, you know, this kind of leads me into the next thing I wanted to talk with you about because, yeah, and you've touched on it already, that it's not really eliminating the burqa or eliminating the hijab mm -hmm. that will make Muslim women free. But uh, you, you stated these garments are not the issue. But what is the real issue? What will make m women more free? Well, I think that women need education. They need freedom. They need people believe in them. Yeah, they need to just have their own decision. They need equality. Right. Yeah, it's difficult to find it. I know in our culture it's difficult that women decide for their life. So, I mean, they can, like, there are few, not a lot. A f uh, say that again, I didn't quite hear I mean, that. the number of those people who has equality, those are not a lot. Like, in Kabul, in capital, we can see that some women, maybe they have some equality. Uh -huh. But, I mean, if we see it generally in all Afghanistan, no equality for women. Right, and, and women mm. are generally not educated? Not we can say like the new generation is more educated now, but the past generation no. They had problem like even it was not allowed for women to do education, and uh, still there are few women who could do education in in that time, but mostly not. Mostly not. Yes. Well, I I would uh, attest even for an American woman who has gr grown up, you know, relatively free, that education has been the thing that really. Uh, uh, put me over the top, so to speak. It's been yeah. the thing that it's all uh, given me the confidence to go out yes. to, to travel to 
uh, you know, start my own yes. uh, jobs to uh, to even do this uh, radio show, yes. uh, which I'm doing for public radio. And I have no radio experience, but I've got a lot of other experiences behind me. Yeah. And that education, I always fall yes. back on. Education always is like a power. Yes, <laughs> it yes. is. That's a beautiful way to put it. Thank yes. you. Well, now, with all due respect to your clothing choice here of wearing the scarf, uh, the hijab, on your head, would you ever consider going outside without it, even like here in uh, California? Well, I usually decide to what I want to wear. Like, for me, anything I would, f anything I feel comfortable with, I would do that. Like, when I'm okay, when I'm feeling comfortable with my scarf, even I travel everywhere, I don't think about to take it off because I feel it's a part of my style, a part of my culture, about a part of the thing I really want to have it. So that's why I don't think it's something which is we to take it off. Right. There's no reason yeah. for you to yeah, take it off, because in other words. Because I'm feeling comfortable with it. I, I love to have it. It's because of my belief. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. And you're just used to dressing this way. How old were you when you began to wear a scarf on your head? Well, since the time we wanted to go to a school, like when I was seven years old, uh -huh. I mean, it was not very like that I should wear it, but it was the st a style for school girls that they should have a scarf. And uh, that's why, like, usually when I, I mean, the time that I should wear it, it was about when I was... 12 or 13 mm -hmm. but before that like I was okay but when I went to school I had my scarf too I see so you've really been wearing it most of your life yeah yeah yes okay well I can understand that I I had a, a friend who had uh, cancer and she had to have chemo and lost her hair so she got a wig and she uh, told me that she wore the wig for about a year after her hair had oh. actually grown back mm. because she got used to wearing it. You know, it, mm. it just felt she felt more comfortable yes. and more more, uh, more confident. Yeah. yeah, with it on. Yes. So I can understand why. You know, there's mm. no reason for you to take it off. Yeah. I just wondered what this you would say. This is also a part of my belief. I think it's something that I needed. Uh huh. Do you want to talk about your belief or mm, no? Okay, <laughs> that, that's okay, not necessary. Now, let's get back um, to s your series of murals. Uh, one that I uh, saw was Birds with No Wings and another, your latest, Birds of No Nation. Um, could you describe these paintings? Let's start with Birds with No Wings. Uh, what um, do they show us? I don't have Birds with No na Wings. I don't know which one is it, but I have Birds with no nation. Oh, okay. Okay, I got some misinformation yeah, there. Yeah, not wings, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my series, Birds of No Nation, it was a series about, uh, because recently a lot of people of my country are living, so they're trying to go somewhere to find peace and stay there. So I just thought maybe we are like those birds who are traveling to find a good place to stay. Like usually I saw when season changed, the birds are traveling somewhere to stay feeling better in it. And I just thought maybe we are like those birds. We have no nation. Even those birds have no any specific place. They all the time traveling. And then I thought maybe we are like that. We are all the time traveling. And even we lost our nation because all the time we try to go to different countries. Now we see a lot of our own people at any part of the world with different nationality. So that's why I call it birds of no nation. And that makes feel me so sad because, I mean, in my country and people are living, they are not happy. They all the time thinking that they are missing something in their life, which is peace. So they are around to find peace. Right. So, uh, you know, the figures in your paintings migrate like the birds do. Yeah. That, that time, because this figure in my artwork is like a character movie. Is a character in a movie which is doing different acts, so she's acting for different messages in my work. Oh, okay. So now, are the figures uh, women again in these paintings, Bir birds of no nation? Yeah, the same uh -huh. figure. Yeah, that's the same figure. And then some of them are again are carrying musical instruments. Yes. And is it the same reason? Her voice. Yes. Her voice. Okay. Now. Um, 
Your beautiful fantasy paintings uh, depict life for women as you hope it will be. But what is everyday life like for the women of Afghanistan? I was just wondering so if... So, it would be different. Depends where they're staying and which kind of family they are. So, if they are in an open-minded family, women, usually those people who are doing education, they can do to a school or college, and women can go to work if they're open-minded family. But if they're close-minded family, they need to stay at home, take care of children, to make food, to prepare everything for life, and for cleaning up. It's different. Uh -huh. With different families, everything is different. Oh, right. Yeah. And your family, uh, pretty open-minded? Yes. I'm lucky my family is open-minded, and it's also I'm, I'm happy because they always support my art, even they know it's dangerous to me. Wow, that's yeah. uh, you know, really impressive. Now, y are you married? Yes, I'm married. Uh huh. What does your husband do? Uh, my husband is a filmmaker oh. and a director of theater. Oh, so mm -hmm. and does he support you in your art and yes, your street art? He's a really supportive person in my life. Oh, yeah. does he ever come along with you? Yeah, we travel sometimes together, but sometimes because both of us are busy with our own works, so sometimes we, we are traveling alone. Right, So, uh, but does he like come along uh, when you're going to do a mural painting on a, a abandoned building, yes, for example? Yes, sometimes, sometimes he tried to come because he's trying to record me while I'm painting, want to record my work process sometimes. Oh. But sometimes I really scare of the environment when I don't want nothing. I don't want that something happen to him or to any other person who come to me. So that's why usually I, s I like to go alone to be, com to be comfortable. Right. Okay, so uh, uh, do women have uh, internet access and computer skills? Yes, uh -huh. it's, it's good that uh, now in Afghanistan everybody has internet. I see a lot of women, even those women who are at home, they have internet, they have Facebook, they are sharing their ideas with friends. Oh, that's good. Even they are not using internet officially for emails or for any work, so... Uh -huh. But they still, they they have access to internet. As I see, like in Kabul, I see everybody has internet. D does everyone, uh, or nearly everyone, have a cell phone? Yes, uh -huh. a lot of uh, smartphones, yeah. Oh, wow, yes. well, that's good. Now, are, are most women married in Afghanistan? Yes, usually, yes. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, uh, let's see, I wondered if you... Um, uh, I I'd heard that you lived at home, but you said that's not true. You that you're married and lived with yeah. your husband, yes. right? Do women ever live alone? Like maybe have their own apartment? Mm, I don't think so. Oh no, they pretty much have to live with family. Yeah, or usually or with husband. family. Yes. Right, right. So are most marriages arranged? Well, yeah, it's usually like that in. Uh huh. So the parents arrange with a, like a marriage broker yeah, or it's something. Yeah, it's it's usually uh -huh. it's like this. Yes. So I, I, is it at all possible for a woman to meet a man on her own without any uh, anybody interceding? It's not very common. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, do you think that women support each other in a quest for equality? Yes, there are. Like in Kabul, which is the capital, I see that people, women, trying to find some way to support each other in different ways. Yeah. D do they get together and have groups at one of their homes or something? In not a lot. It's not very common, but I saw a few sometimes. Uh huh. Yeah. I read a book about women in Afghanistan who held secret literature in mm -hmm. reading classes. Does mm -hmm. this ever happen? Sorry. Oh. I was just wondering if women ever got together to um, educate each other. Yeah, they they do, but it's not very common. It's not common. Yeah. Okay. Are are women allowed to vote? Yes, they are allowed to vote. Oh, yes. they are. Yes, okay. but unfortunately, sometimes they need to vote to the person that all the family is trying to vote for. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Like they said, you they even have no idea that they are voting to whom, because family trying to tell her that. You go to this person or that person. 
Yeah, it's mostly There's like a lot of pressure to yeah, vote the way the family yeah, does. Yeah, from the family. But there are also some women are voting by themselves, too. Oh, okay. Well, the, the same thing happens here. Many yeah. uh, women are influenced by their husbands yeah. and families. Mm-hmm. But yes. it, then again, many women yeah. vote the opposite. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we have to take another little break here. This is KPPQ LP Ventura, 104.1 FM, and we're in the women's room, where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good. Today's guest is Shamsia Hassani, global artist of distinction. She is a Muslim woman from Kabul, Afghanistan. Shamsia is a street artist, muralist, and art professor at Kabul University. Okay, so we're back, and I had another question about uh, everyday life with women. Um, are you allowed to drive a car? No, maybe I'm allowed, but because it's, I mean, it's not common. Some women are scared of dra- driving sometimes because they're scared of environment and people. So I maybe they might harass her more than before. So what do you mean by the environment? Does that mean because there could be bombings or yeah, explosions? Yeah, bomb- bombing, explosions, closed minded people people who are harassing, like those are different, but it's not common that a woman drive in Afghanistan. But there's no exact ban for driving. No, no exact ban, but no one tried to oh. drive in Kabul. Uh, well, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, Saudi women uh, were given the okay to drive. Did mm-hmm. you hear about that? Yes, I think I heard about it. And did you ha- what did you think about that? So, I think it's good that women can drive because like this is also a part of equality why women cannot drive <laughs> so in afghanistan there are women who are driving but those are just a few like few numbers we can say two three or four uh-huh. not, not too much but yeah. not too many <laughs> yeah yeah uh well i've uh, heard that in saudi many men were very happy about this because mm-hmm. uh they felt it would help the economy because yes. women for example could not go pick the kids up from mm-hmm. school yeah. you know the uh, the husband had to leave whatever he's yeah. doing go pick the kids up it helps too much with family too yes yeah right yeah. it was just was caught you know probably yeah. that's the influence that help yeah. change the law. Yes. Do you think this might become more common or you know in Afghanistan? I hope so, but I don't think so because in Afghanistan already we have a lot of other problems that we need to think about them yeah. <laughs> or we are waiting for some good change in our society. Right. So let's see what will happen. I don't know. Right. So it's not the top priority to drive yeah. they're just uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, still we are we are thinking about something bigger, some bigger problem. <laughs> So, um, what do w- most women do besides, uh, you know, get married, raise children, keep the house, uh, do the cooking? Uh, is there anywhere for them to go for amusement or entertainment? Well, it is also not common for women, but usually women go shopping. They go to restaurant with friends and families. Oh, that's good. And uh, there is no cinema like for women. Uh huh. No movies. No movies. But is there cinema for men? There are cinema, but I didn't hear that people go to cinema. So how, d- how did your husband uh, e- end up in filmmaking? Where does he show his films? So it's different because maybe they have some event and then they can show it in I some see. event. So not like, not like going to a cinema for watching a movie. Right. So uh, do you have like malls uh, that people can go? Do you have Western uh, yes. shops? And we have a lot of good malls, yes. Oh, oh that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. But it's all the time we are worried when we go shopping because all the time we think something is going to happen. Oh. So we are worried all the time. Even nothing happened, even if everything goes well, but we are still worried. Yeah, you s- I don't blame you. <laughs> You're always on edge a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good way to live. So have you been to the States before? To the States, yes. Yeah, you've been. Yeah, b- yeah. I was been before, yes. Uh, how, how long? Uh, like how many times? Like, I think five times. Oh, five times. Yeah. Oh, so you're very familiar. <laughs> yes. So is it easy for you to talk to Americans? Yeah, it's easy. Yes. Uh, do you, uh, how do you find Americans? Those are different at different part of the U.S. Uh-huh. I found that in California, everybody is more friendly. But 
I mean, more serious people are usually, as I experienced when I was in Indiana, oh. people were very, very serious and even some of them are very racist, as I, as I my experience. Uh, some of them are what? Very or? racist. Oh, religious. As yes. Not religious, racist. Oh, racist. As my experience, I don't know, but my experience was that in Indiana, I saw a lot of racist people. But when I came to California, I found everything much better. Even in Ventura, it's much better than ever. Oh, than I saw LA. a lot of people, like people are so kind here. They are very kind. They are very emotional. They are very nice. So Ventura, like, I can't believe that people are so nice here. Oh, that's <laughs> really nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so happy to have <laughs> you here. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much, Shamsia for being in the women's room with us and for sharing your courage, your artwork, and giving us some insights into what life is like for women in Afghanistan. Thank you, too. Thank you. Oh, good. I really enjoyed talking mm -hmm. with you. Thank you. This is KPPQ LP Ventura, 104.1 FM, and we're in the women's room where we appreciate and support each other. I'm your host, Kathleen Good. Today's guest has been global artist of distinction, street artist, and painter Shamsia Hassani from Kabul, Afghanistan. In the women's room is where we appreciate and support each other. Every woman knows what our issues are. We live them every day. Tune in to listen to what women talk about. In the women's room, is your place for enlightening discussions with experts about our history, our health, psychology, politics, workplace, art, child rearing, literature, social and economic issues, environment, and much, much more. The women's room is where we share our secrets, our thoughts, our fears, and get advice and support. Be sure to tune in to get information, support, and guidance. And thank you for listening today. Goodbye. <laughs>